I'm sitting, I'm standing here, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm listening to all these stories, and I'm, and I'm watching. It's like, you get all mic'd up, and, uh, and then everybody's got all this stuff done. So I realized, like, this, this is, it's not really necessary. It's just a crutch, you know? You need to do something with your hands. So I'm just going to leave it here, just like you did. It's not necessary, OK? Uh, first of all, judges, please don't listen. Skydiver, you were awesome. Really good story. Uh, Rebecca, you were awesome. Spin, uh, Quinn Spin, you were really, really good. So uh, I'm not a professional a storyteller. This is my first time telling a story in public. So this is a new beginning in and of itself. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. The year was 1964. It was just after the Kennedy assassination, and it was around the time that the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan show. My parents, my brother and I, were boarding a plane to come to JFK for the first time. I remember the whole family was at the airport, and everybody was hugging and crying. Oh, I'm not going to see you again. And, 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 and it was so exciting, because I was just a kid. It was my first time getting in a plane. So we walked down. There was no uh, gangplank or anything. You, you walked down the runway, and then you got into the plane. And it was like this four-engine turboprop and, uh, plane. And we were going to be doing a 22-hour flight from Argentina to JFK. So uh, we get in the plane, and I'd never been in a plane before. They close the doors, and we take off, and all this noise and everything. And soon I realized that there was no such thing as a non-smoking flight back then. So for 22 hours, it was like a huge cloud of freaking smoke. Everybody was smoking. That was the thing to do. The women were in, like, dressed to the nines, you know, all the sexy clothes and the 1960s hats, and the men were in their suits, you know. And so shortly after takeoff, the men found the excuse, oh, I got to stretch my legs, you know. So they would walk back to the back of the plane and smoke away. And what they were really doing was like chit-chatting and checking out the stewardesses, because to be a stewardess back then in an airline, you had to be like Miss America. Otherwise, you couldn't work, you know? So they were like, you know, oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I'm going to America. You know, it was a big thing. So, you know, every like four hours or so, you had to stop and land and refuel this plane because it took so long. So we stopped in, I don't know, Rio de Janeiro and all this stuff. Uh, around 7 in the morning, we landed in Trinidad. And they asked us to deplane because we were going to have breakfast at the airport. Now, uh, I led a very sheltered life in Argentina. I didn't know what bigotry was about. I had no concept of, like when we came here in, in the 1965, there was the riots in Newark and all this stuff. I had no idea. I, you know, I, I had no idea what black people were, were about. I had no idea why hatred. I, no. It, it didn't exist. So we get off the plane in Trinidad, and I couldn't believe it. We were the only white people in the country. Everybody was black. I look at my mother. It's like, who are these people? <laughs> I, said, I never saw so many black people. Oh, they're black people. Oh my god. They were beautiful. So they take us into this room, and they serve us breakfast. The other new beginning, the first, very first time I had scrambled eggs and ham. Oh my God, I couldn't stop eating. It was delicious. I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm 11 years old. I couldn't stop eating it. So anyway, my brother was eight years old. He's like, yeah, la di la di la. We get back on the plane, and, and so you know, finally we get to JFK. And we get to JFK, and we go through customs and everything. You know, we had like the green cards. We we're like legal aliens and all that stuff. So uh, we had people waiting for us. They were going to drive us to Jersey City. This is where we, you know, we had got an apartment in Jersey City. My father had a job there. So we're exiting the airport. And we didn't speak a, a, one word of English. We didn't know anything. Nobody spoke any, a word of English. So uh, my brother 
was walking out the airport and he looks at my father and says, these Americans, they're so nice. In Argentina, they would never put these signs up. Look, they're wishing you success as you walk out the airport. And I look up at this sign and it says, exit. <laughs> so, exit, you know, in Spanish, success is exito. <laughs> it's my father. Well, that's my story. Thanks for listening.